good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us. I am joined by uh, Bongani Mukhanan Zimazwi, spokesperson for Zim community here in South Africa. And also I'm joined by Joel, African Center for Migration and Society here in South Africa. And also my colleague Diana Chiangwa, a journalist in the Zimbabwean. Um, okay, we are going to speak about the video that I think all of us have seen that has been circulating about the MEC of uh, Limpopo, who was talking to a Zimbabwean patient, and many people are not happy, though there are some who are happy about it. But uh, most people are not happy about hair conduct. I'll start with you, Joe. Uh, what do you think of uh, this uh, video and the conduct of the MEC? I think it's important to acknowledge that, you know, we don't know the full circumstances around the video. So I think it's important just to acknowledge that in terms of sort of context. However, from, from my reading of it is that we really need to question what the role of the MEC is. Um, and her responsibility in the ways in which she engages with any patient in any facility that she's responsible for. We also need to acknowledge that the ways in which some of that, some of the ways in which the MEC communicated with the patient um, is not the way to treat any patient at any time in a facility. Um, I think that at no point um, was there a suggestion that the, the particular patient was questioning or challenging the ways in which the South African public health care system works? For example, we know that there are co-payments and that there's a fee schedule and a means test um, that's, that's in place. I think what was also very alarming was the notion um, from the MEC that the patient would not be allowed to be discharged um, until she'd paid. Now, we again need to recognize how this plays out across the South African public health care system and the ways in which anybody who is required to make a co-payment, how that process works. Um, and, and so, again, we need to make sure the same rules are applied. Um, and I don't think that, um, you know, that there should never be a situation where any patient, any healthcare user is prevented from discharge related to whether or not a particular fee has or hasn't been paid. This is applicable to South African citizens as well as to foreign nationals, also to South African citizens who have medical aid and then choose to take, um, make use of the, the public health care system. So we, we do need to recognize um, the importance of getting the information correct, the facts correct, and importantly, the way in which a healthcare provider, an MEC, chooses to engage with um, their constituency. Uh, Vongani, coming to you, uh, let's speak about uh, the migration. Uh, it was one of the, thing that, uh, the things that uh, the MEC emphasized that uh, Zimbabweans are coming to South Africa and they are flooding the health system. Although uh, uh, she did not speak well to the uh, patient, what do you make of this? Well, uh, th thanks, uh, thanks, Bongani. Uh, the the issue of migration and and the influx of uh, Zimbabwean migrants to South Africa is is something that can only be addressed at political level. And for us, when we look at an MEC who is a, a political appointee in the department, uh, speaking to a patient who actually has nothing they can really do to address um, Nangagwa. Uh, as she put it, uh, it's a responsibility for the Zimbabwean government really to take care of its own people. And she, while she may have points uh, relating to the constraints uh, that are now being seen by the, uh, the Department of Health today in Zimbabwe and maybe in South Africa in general, she was addressing to the wrong person really. And the, the, the sort of manner of addressing where there is uh, an audience laughing and uh, really uh, embarrassing that uh, poor woman uh, is not on. But then she raised very, very true points. I mean, at, at, at the same rate, we can say, let's condemn the MEC. Uh, she didn't uh, treat the patient within the hypocritic oath of dignity and, and all the other things that uh, a patient must uh, have rights to. She also pointed to real issues of 
irresponsibility from our own Zimbabwean government that has forced people really to flock uh, the South African system and flood it. And it actually showed a frustration that uh, she couldn't even herself rein in. And we, we, within the critique that we would critique her to say fundamentally, MEC, that's wrong. You don't do that in the medical practice. It's not on. But we need to confront our government to say, Zimbabwean government, why would you let us as Zimbabwean citizens all over the world now be dehumanized in this fashion just because you are running down the entire healthcare facilities in our, in our country? And not only the healthcare, the economy is in total collapse such that people end up uh, illegally uh, coming to South Africa as she was identified as a potentially illegal uh, migrant. So we need to balance uh, between the fundamental of, uh, in terms of health uh, and, and, and medical practice, I, MEC, that's a no, uh, that is not done. But the Zimbabwean government must take responsibility for the humiliation of that patient. Thank you so much, uh, Bongani. Diana, when you first saw that vis video as a Zimbabwean, what came into your mind? When I saw the, the, the video going um, uh, viral, I was so, I, I had no words to say. I kept on repeating, trying to understand the context of, of, of the video. I personally, as a Zimbabwean was, I think it's time to pack and go home because you cannot go in any public institution where you are going to, be, to, 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 to have to reveal your identity and then have to be humiliated. So it's, it's, it's sad to see such, such kind of, 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 of thing happening to a vulnerable person like, like, like that woman who could not even, I mean, you, you, see the, you saw the video, she couldn't even defend herself. She was laughed at, it was, it was a circus to her. So it's, it's sad, it's, it's, it's sad to a point where it's, dividing us as, as human beings, it's, it's frustrating. There is a lot, we, they, they, there is a lot happening at the same time. Yes, uh, Joe, um, coming back to you, what does the ethics and conducts of uh, a medical personnel say, especially what we saw on the video, and uh, even some nurses were there and even laughing. How do you think uh, these nurses now will start treating, uh, let's say foreigners who come in that same hospital, uh, what I'm, I'm, I'm pointing at is, uh, does the ethics and conduct of uh, a medical personnel uh, allow that? I think it's important that we, we start maybe from the point that the, the South African public healthcare system is in crisis. And that's a crisis that's the result of um, many years of mismanagement, many years of um, problematic um, ways in which, you know, tenders and procurement processes, drug stockouts, and those are the result of the way in which the public health care system is managed by the South African government. So we know that there's a lot of frustration around the delivery of the system and the challenges that are faced, both by everyone reliant on the public health care system, but also by staff working within that system. So we need to acknowledge that. We know that people are frustrated, but the ways in which those frustrations are manifesting is incredibly problematic. In this case, um, taking out frustrations around resource allocation, um, the way that facilities are, are running the system more broadly on a patient um, is unethical. It is, as my colleague mentioned, you know, against uh, the Hippocratic Oath. It's also about um, the responsibility of an MEC and their professional conduct, both as an MEC and as a medical um, doctor. We know that this is about setting examples. One of the challenges we see in terms of the mismanagement of the healthcare system is that there is a lack of oversight. There is a lack of support. There's a lack of um, evaluation of the ways in which frontline healthcare workers are providing services. So this is giving kind of a green light to this sort of conduct. Um, I think it's also making, I can anticipate that it's made many of the staff very anxious as well. Um, when your MEC is referring to a Zimbabwean patient in this way or to Zimbabweans who are making use of healthcare services to which they're entitled, 
you are also creating tensions and challenges. We have to acknowledge not all healthcare providers treat um, non-South African citizens in this way. Um, so it's it's unprofessional. There's codes of conduct. We might want to think about the health professionals. Council of South Africa, is this something that needs to be reported? We might need to think about the South African Human Rights Commission um, and the ways in which this kind of behavior is xenophobic and what the role of the state and political leaders is um, in managing in managing the ways in which they engage. Um, uh, Bongani Mkwana, is my last question. Do you think uh, this kind of behavior, especially coming from the people, from uh, politicians, we have seen uh, politicians also pushing the same agenda. Do you think it's uh, about politics or the, maybe is it still about uh, the real problems that uh, South Africans are facing or it's now politics? Uh, well, unfortunately, everything in life is politics. Uh, uh, some court says even the price of bread, uh, everything is, is politics. One would uh, look at a wounded ANC, which uh, uh, was challenged by Action SA and other such uh, right-wingist parties who were anti-migrant in the past election, uh, showing that, you know, um, the anti-migrant rhetoric uh, has a lot of... Uh, uh, rewards in terms of votes. People are feeling uh, an economic climate that is not very healthy and good for them. And, and in their frustration, the easiest scapegoat is to feel that, oh, well, if these people were not here, perhaps we'll be having a, a better uh, circumstance. I believe it is inappropriate for an MEC to do uh, as she did especially against a patient who is on a bed seeking to be operated upon somebody who needs health care and went there uh, with the belief that she's going to be assisted to then uh, find herself being as insulted and ridiculed in that manner and being recorded in as much as we admit that there is, uh, the failing healthcare in Zimbabwe uh, is as a result uh, of the governance failures of our own government. We also believe that uh, it is, there is a way of conveying this kind of message. South Africa and Zimbabwe do not have uh, diplomatic ties shut. They can uh, communicate these things to each other but it doesn't then mean uh, necessitate an attack on a patient who is desperate and a patient on a patient who has got nothing to do with the fading healthcare in our own country so i believe that the south african government has a better way of trying to relay their message if their health uh, care services are being overburdened by Zimbabweans, as we already know, there is a way of reaching out to the Zimbabwean government, and we know that the ruling African National Congress and ZANU-PF have got what they call a, a liberations, a former liberation uh, uh, fighters platform, which they can use, because all we have had is the ANC supporting ZANU-PF against uh, ordinary Zimbabweans. I think they need to come out in the open and clearly to talk to Zimbabwe government and Zimbabwean authorities to stop whatever they are doing against poor Zimbabweans.